I've got my pink PS2. I'm going to try and put this chip in it and I have no idea how it's going to go. Hi, welcome back to the shed. I've got a mod chip and it's to go in a PS2. I tried PS2 mod chips years ago and I had no luck with them, but I think it's one of those things I don't like. I don't like being beaten. <laughs> I don't like trying something and it not working. So I'm going to try again and hopefully I'm going to succeed this time. I'm going to try it out with my pink PS2 Slim. Main reason being it's small and I've got loads of consoles. I've got too many consoles. They take up quite a bit of space. I've got a big PS2 set up at the moment for playing my PAL games. I've got another big Japanese PS2. I've got loads of these sort of PAL games, the, the UK specific region games. And I've also got quite a few Japanese games, which is why I got the Japanese PS2 in the first place. But to have two set up at the same time, and both of those are quite big versions of the console, I just haven't got enough room. So, the idea is, my pink PS2 is beloved, okay. Not that this is expendable, but if this doesn't work and if I end up really making a mess of it, I do still have the consoles to be able to play my games while I fix this. But hopefully I won't have to fix it. I think this is going to work. I've done a little bit of homework. I found out that my chip, which is a Modbo 5, okay, we'll get that out of the packet in a bit, is compatible with this model PS2. Looking at the sticker on the back here, it's a model SCPH 77003, which is apparently compatible with this. And I've done a little bit of searching around and I found a guide, which I've printed out because I'm old school. I'll be using this guide to help me try and get all the bits in the right place. But also I've found this picture again, I've printed, which is of somebody else's install. So I can see whereabouts it should go, how it should look. I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm just a curious idiot, really. I am prone to wanting to take things apart and interfere with them if the option is there to take things apart and interfere with them. So that's what I'm going to do with this PlayStation 2. And hopefully it will go pretty well and I'll be able to play my UK games and my Japanese games without having to set up a different console each time. So we shall see how that goes. I hope it works. It looks kind of fiddly. I mean, look at that. There's, there's wires sprawling everywhere. I'll try and get it tidy. I'm, I'll get a little bit OCD with, with wanting to make things look perfect, but it's inside the console. I need to remind myself of that. And so long as everything fits and there's no strain on anything, it should be all right. So yeah, let's see how it goes. All right, let's take a look at our chip. Um, can I get into the packet? Right, scissors. Okay, so we've also got a little sticky pad. So we have a self-adhesive sticky pad and we have our chip with a number of labeled points all the way around. There it is. All these different points are going to have wires connected to various points on our PlayStation 2. So we'll put that out of the way here. And that over there. Right, here is my PS2. Uh, so I'm going to need to try and open that up, take the motherboard out and look for where all of this mess is going to take place. That was interesting. <laughs> I'm amazed actually. I didn't buy this PlayStation from new disclaimer. Um, I had it second hand and I've never opened it up before. Um, it was weird because the sticker was on there so it's clearly never been opened up but there are a few screws missing and then the further I got into it, it looks like there's been water damage in there. Now it doesn't put a foot wrong in terms of playing um, but if we look at the motherboard there's, there's marks and things all over it and there's, it was full of like just bits and mess and 
this part around here in particular looks to have been particularly badly water damaged so I'm lucky it still works and if I, I mean look at this even like the plastic sheet there has got all this sort of rust all over it inside that part of the metal plating is, is covered in rust um, if I look on, on that one that's not too bad but there's a few spots and even inside the plastic casing there's a load of these rusty marks so before I move on and do anything else I'm gonna um, gonna try and clean those up and also if it ends up not working I can blame it on that instead of my terrible soldering skills so oh and the the fan no matter how carefully I tried to tweak and twist it just would not come off I didn't want to force it and snap the wires so I'll leave well alone and just leave it there so next job is a bit of a cleanup and then we can start looking at where the chip's going to go which looks like it'll be on this area here or the other side I don't know I'll have to have a look okay let's go said earlier I've got the PS2 slim and I've got the PS2 fat and I was deliberating I was deliberating earlier as to which one I was going to actually mod I thought oh the slim one will be good because it's quite small it's compact it should be quite good fun open it up <laughs> it's like this water damage and rust everywhere and I'm like oh my god this worked fine before is it gonna work now it's back together I don't know I've scrubbed everything as best I can uh, I've not gone overboard with it because I don't want to spend hours doing it and then the mod not working and it's all on the inside so once it's back together no one will ever see it um, but what we have now is our motherboard and our chip so we're going to have a go at doing the installation and then if i've still got the will to live we'll put it back together and see how it performs if i can play some japanese games on this ps2 tonight then we'll be worth the effort I've got my guide which instructs me to have the board this way around zooms in on different sections I'm assuming I do it in, in order I don't know and then I've got my other photos for reference so I'll get going hopefully I won't mess it up we'll see right quick check in so the diagrams look like this but the actual <laughs> board is like this it's tiny like so tiny like here's a really small screw okay one of the screws from where we were taking it apart and here's the really small screw next to those solder points oh my goodness it's just i don't think my little camera can even zoom in on them so i had to stop filming and get my i've got like a, a magnifier light like this so there you go that's how i was looking at my solder points and if I can line that up there you might get a decent view so I'm going to keep going and see how it turns out and show you when it's all done oh. this is probably about as done as I'm going to be um, I think I've got all the wires in place and it took a lot longer than I expected. I've been using this very, very thin single core Kynar wire. Um, and if I lift the board up, you'll see there's lots of these very, very tiny, tiny solder points on the board. These here were crazy to try and do. And then trying to route the wires without putting too much strain on those and pinging them back off um, there's all sorts going on in fact I've just spotted a tiny bit of wire on the board that I'm going to remove I'll do a last bit of inspection and then put it back together um, but as that stands there I'm just trying to think if I've got something I can use for scale okay there's a CR2032 battery there so you know roughly how big that is so you can see kind of how big these solder points were by comparison they were teeny weeny um so yeah 
clean up time, put it back together and we'll see how that goes. That's back together. I seem to be missing one of the little feet, <laughs> but I don't know if it was missing in the first place, so I'll check the video later. Now it's time to head inside, hook it all up, and check if it works, which I suspect it won't. I'm being pessimistic, um, but we shall find out. Right, so here we are, a little further on. I've spent some time with this little thing, and I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Okay, first of all, the biggest surprise was once I'd finished soldering and I put it all back together, brought it inside for testing, it actually worked. Um, first go. I'm not used to that. Normally, when I do something like this, it will be seven, eight, nine more times of opening up, checking, troubleshooting, resoldering. I'm quite used to doing that. I don't mind it when it's a difficult, demanding job like that. It sort of comes with the territory. Um, so I was really surprised when it actually worked. The worry for me when I came to load it up was that at first it all seemed to be going fine. The chip logo came up and then it said it couldn't boot the menu. Um, so that was a bit of an issue, but I did some Googling. Got a long story short, what you needed to do was take out the cable, which in this case was my HDMI adapter, but it was functioning as a component cable. And with the component cable, uh, this menu wouldn't display. So I swapped to a different TV with an RCA connection. The menu came up fine. I could get all my settings right. And then from there, since then, it's booted up perfectly every time. Here we go, success. Um, I've swapped to a different TV. This one has the um, composite input on the side and true to what I'd read online, it will load up this menu now. So I can go through, I can do my settings and hopefully just get it to boot straight up on my other TV. Within all these various settings, the main one we want is boot mode. So the problem was that the boot mode was set to mass storage. So that would be if I had a hard drive plugged into it. So I've changed that to auto and then I restarted and checked it and everything seemed fine on this cable. So now I'm going to go and try it with the component cable, well, the HDMI cable. All right, so now I've changed the settings on the PS2 to get it to the component setting. And um, when I switch on now, it boots straight to the system menu without any errors. So <laughs> apologies for the reflections. Um, but yeah, it seems to be working. Time to try some games. Right now by doing this video it means it gives me the opportunity to do something that I forgot to do when I was testing my HDMI adapter for the PS2. I've got this game, uh, Street Fighter Alpha Anthology, that should run in 480 progressive scan if you boot holding triangle X. So what we'll do is we'll hold those two buttons and boot the console. The game's inside already. So X to enter, and instead of directly launching the game, so we've got the Matrix Infinity boot screen there as well now, so that shows that the chip's working. And now it brings up this menu where you can start game or change video mode. So we'll go to change video mode, and you get to test different outputs. So we'll, at the moment, it's on PAL, 50 hertz, because it's a PAL PlayStation. Uh, if we go down to test NTSC progressive output, brings up that and basically if that displays it means it's working so you can press X to keep that mode now you can see the current mode NTSC progressive uh, it doesn't tell you anywhere on this screen but if you press triangle it will exit and then you can go to start game screen size everything else looks fine 
Another quick go. Street Fighter Alpha 3. And that all seems to be working fine. It's a shame the only game I've got in my collection is one that I'm terrible at, but it's still a game. A bit of a test for us. Just have a quick go. Everything seems to be rock solid on the display. Oh, I can still remember some of the moves for Kami. There we go. It looks really, really good. It, it's like I was playing on one of my modern consoles. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I've got Japanese Tekken 4 to try. Pal copy of Res uh, running at 60 hertz. There we go. It's a great game, by the way, and it looks really good on this screen. And I'm terrible at it. Ah! When it comes to testing, I've tried UK PAL games, they all booted fine. I've tried a range of Japanese games, they were okay. I may have tried American games. I don't know if I've got any American games. Anyway, I tried all sorts of different games and they all worked okay. I even found an old game, like a copied one on a DVD-R that I'd forgotten I even had. Uh, so I tried that and it loaded that too. So we know that it will load games from different regions and that it will load PS2 games on uh, DVD-R as well. So that's pretty successful. When it came to trying out PS1, well, it still works. It, it worked, it loaded games up, but there were issues again with the HDMI adapter component cable. I tested it with the RCA cable. All the PS1 games I tried booted up fine. When I tried them through the HDMI adapter, it would seem to start to boot and then would go to a blank screen, just a black screen. Uh, it would occasionally flicker on and off, but wouldn't display it. Um, even when I changed the HDMI adapter to the RGB mode, it still wouldn't display. So the big question is, in terms of doing this mod, you know I said it looked easy in the first place and you saw what it was like for me going through it. Would I recommend it? If you're a beginner to soldering and modding, I would leave this one well alone. Uh, if you're experienced, I would say go for it, um, but go in with a bit of caution. Don't be too arrogant about it because it may well catch you out. If I was talking to past me, would I do it? I'd say yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm a masochist with these things. Um, I like putting myself through these, these difficult challenges and sort of almost suffering through it to try and get to that really satisfying end result of, of getting it working. I really like that sort of challenge. And if you're like-minded with that, then I'd say give it a go, um, but don't expect it to just work really easily. Do, do expect it to be difficult and then um, take the time and care to do it properly. And I'm sure you'll be fine. Certainly those people I've seen, and because I was watching various YouTube videos of installs, people who can just do it really well, really easily. I've just got so much respect for them because um, it is not an easy thing to do and people make it look so easy. I've done it. I tried these years ago and failed miserably and I just could not get there with it. So it's like I've battled that demon and I've, I've conquered it now because I've got one working. Whether I'll try another one, Maybe sometime in the future, not the immediate future. Yeah, possibly on the fat PS2, just to see how I go with that one. Uh, but for the moment, the Slim's perfect for my setup because it's so crowded already. The Slim takes up very little room, so that's fine with me. Um, I'll be sticking with that for the time being. In terms of what I could do next 
regarding the PS2 because I, what I wanted to be able to do was play my UK and my Japanese games on it and it, it works fine for that now. But I'm looking into other PS2 mods. I've seen that, that you can possibly get games to run from a USB drive or installing hard drives and things. Is there any of you who have done PS2 mods or have read about PS2 mods that you'd like to see me have a go at? If you have or you want me to uh, try something out, let me know and I'll look into it, maybe give it a go on this one. Okay, in the meantime, Thank you for coming with me on this little odyssey of PlayStation 2 modding. I'm glad I came out the other side and I'm really pleased with my, my end result of the console. So cheers for coming along. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, well done. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.